Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 39. This week I'm going to be discussing the new valve sensor I've been working on. So this new valve sensor is completely different from the original valve sensor. I've tried to redo pretty much everything on the valve sensor. There's nothing really reused from the first version except the knowledge I gained there to make a better second generation valve sensor and that's what this is. So the first thing you'll notice is the circuit board's new and I've added a purge button. This opens the valve. It's uh, quite useful when you're setting up the camera axe to make sure that you get out any air bubbles in the system and to help line up uh, where the droplets going to occur so that you don't have to constantly trigger things with the camera axe. You can just uh, push this button and it'll create a stream of liquid or if you push it quickly it will just create a single drop. That's not how you photograph droplets but it's useful during setup. The next thing you'll notice is the valve here is much beefier than the old version. This is a much higher quality. It's designed to work with liquids, different viscosity liquids. Uh, this nozzle I've chosen uh, seems to work really well with a bunch of different liquids I've tested. The old nozzle would sometimes get clogged up and things like that. I've not had this one clog in all of my testing so far. So it seems to be much more reliable. The droplets are more consistent than they were on the old version. So I think this is a, a lot better valve than we actually had on the previous valve sensor. Another thing you'll notice is that the reservoir for liquids on this one is many, many times larger than the reservoir on the old valve sensor. Uh, in addition to that, there's a system on the new valve sensor uh, to basically equalize the pressure so that the gravity feed for the valve, as long as the liquid is sort of above the bottom of this inner tube, will um, always have the same amount of gravity pressing the liquid, which creates a more consistent drop. This was a system that was suggested on my forums, and I can't remember who made that suggestion. It was quite a while ago, but it was a really good idea, and I appreciate that a lot. So bigger reservoir for more consistent drops and this pressure equalizing system where as long as the liquid's sort of above this level, it's always going to have the exact same amount of pressure because the air is being sort of relieved through this inner tube system. And the last thing I wanted to mention is just general construction. This uh, new valve sensor is very durable, it, you know, can get knocked around and things aren't going to break off. On the old one, I had hot glued a lot of these pieces into place and those would snap off during shipping and people had to glue them back on. Uh, it just wasn't very high quality, it wasn't durable. Much better on the new one. So here you've got the general setup for the valve sensor. Over here is the camera and that's connected to camera flash port number one on the camera axe. And I've got the camera set to bulb mode and I've done a few test shots to make sure that I've got the ISO and the aperture set up to uh, a setting that I like. Here's the flash and that's connected to the camera flash port number two on the camera axe. And then we've got the valve sensor and that's connected to sensor port number one. You can also connect a second valve to sensor port number two if you want to have multiple drops um, next to each other in the scene. And after you've got this set up, uh, sort of like this, all you have to do is uh, hit the activate button and it'll trigger the camera, the flash, and the valve sensor. Now, there's no liquid in the valve sensor, so I'll put some, you just got some water here for testing. We've got a purge valve that you can sort of see where the water is going to fall and that's in a good location. Uh, so everything should be set up now. So if I hit activate, it'll make a drop, trigger the camera, trigger the flash, and the picture will all be good. Um, right now we're in a lit room. You'd want to do this in a dark room if you're doing it. Um, for photos so that you wouldn't have light pollution in the in the scene from the ambient light levels.
So now we're back in a dark room and I've set up the camera act software to start taking pictures. So all I have to do is hit the activate button and it will keep taking pictures. Each time you see a flash that means I've hit the activate button and it's taking another shot. So it's once things are set up it's, it's quite simple to take a lot of shots. Now I'm going to walk through the different settings on the valve menu so that you can time the shot to happen exactly when you want in the uh, life cycle of a droplet. So the first one is pretty important, the drop size. Uh, on the old valve you had to set this around 50, but because this new valve is much higher quality, I find that a value of around 5 is good, and these are all in milliseconds, so that means the valve is going to be open for approximately 5 milliseconds. And the next one is valve 1 drop to delay. That's going to become important later. That's the time between the first drop and the second drop. But to get started, you just want to do one drop and figure out uh, for your liquid and the height of your valve sensor when everything is happening. So we're just going to leave that at zero for now. Uh, drop to size. Again, that'll be important later when you're trying to get two drops that will collide on top of each other. So um, later we'll set that to five, but right now we're just going to leave it to zero because we're just focusing on one valve and one drop so you can get the timing figured out. And then we've got uh, drop three. Now I don't, I added this because a lot of people were requesting it, but this is for more advanced users and uh, is, you know, arguably it's arguable how useful it is because a third drop doesn't in my opinion add too much to the image but there is an option for a third drop out of this valve one and that's the size for that third drop now flash delay is important because that's the amount of time from uh, the last uh, event in this menu until when the flash gets triggered so I've got that set to 180 milliseconds which is pretty low but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have that single drop come down the se come down and we're going to sort of step through a bunch of different times so that we can sort of see what is happening to the drop um, as time goes by. So we're starting at 100 mil 180 millisecond delay for the flash and I'm going to increase that by 5 milliseconds on each shot and then sort of figure out when I would want to do the timing for multiple shots to, so that the drops are colliding with each other. This will all be more clear as we get further in the process. But in order to step forward by five milliseconds on each shot, um, I set this flash delay auto increment. So that means every time I hit the activate button, the flash will uh, add five milliseconds to this 180 value. So I push it once and then it'll go to 185. I push it again and it'll go to 190. I push it again 195 and, and so forth. And then all of these other values down here are for valve 2. And that only matters if you're plugging a valve into sensor port number 2 and we're not doing that today. So I'm just going to ignore all of those values entirely. So these are the values I started with. And now with those values I created a series of images that you can see happening right now in this video that show the droplet falling. Now since I know how much delay there was for each of these photos for the flash I picked this one, this image which is uh, a flash delay of 205 milliseconds and then I picked this image which has a flash delay of 325 milliseconds and so from those two shots I can calculate when I want to release the second drop so that it will collide with the first drop. So here's a little picture of the valve sensor and this was the first image I showed you at 205 milliseconds. The drop is sort of suspended in midair. And then this is sort of the second shot I showed you which was at 325 milliseconds and there was sort of this uh, pillar of water coming up. And the idea is that you want the second drop to be where this drop is so that it will collide with this pillar of water 
and you'll get this sort of splash. Here's sort of how you go about calculating it once you've taken a series of shots. This is why you always start with one droplet on one valve so you can sort of get this calculation figured out and you don't have to just sort of randomly guess until you finally start getting collisions. You can sort of calculate it uh, when you want the first drop and the second drop to, to be released so that you can get a nice collision. So drop one size in the menu, I set to five. And then drop to delay, we're gonna have to change that from zero to 120. And the reason I came up with 120, it's because I took this 325 when you've got a pillar of water and subtracted um, this 205 because that's the amount of delay you want between the first drop and the second drop. So I got the 120 there. Drop two size is five again. And then for flash delay, I know that the time from the second drop to the flash should be something around 205 milliseconds. So it's 205 milliseconds from the release of the second drop. Um, because then its drop would be here, the first drop would be at this point, and you'd have a splash. But you have to add in some small value to sort of give it time to make that splash. And since that's only one number I have to change, I sort of tried a few different values, and I came up with a value of 260. Uh, worked quite well. And so with these values, I got a a good series of shots that you're looking at right now and uh, I kind of think they you know turn out pretty well you can see that they're not a hundred percent consistent from from one shot to another even with this high quality valve sensor that I've created it's much better than the previous version but there's still some variability and I think that's that's a good thing this sort of randomality to it uh, really makes each interest each image uh, unique and interesting I would say that about 75 to 80 percent of my shots um, are being shown in this series here. Uh, there was, you know, maybe 25, 20 percent of them that just didn't look very good. They were the timing was a little bit farther off, so I didn't want to display them here. But you know, 75 percent keeper rate is is really good, I think, for this kind of a shot. And it really, you know, I was triggering these images maybe one second after another. So to get, you know, 30 shots only took me 30 seconds you know once you've got sort of the the numbers figured out you can take a whole bunch of shots and then you can start you know adjusting the lighting and making the light a lot better the lighting here was very simple and didn't look you know great there's a lot nicer photos out there and what you do to get those nicer photos is you uh, concentrate on getting really nice lighting you concentrate on uh, tweaking the values a little bit and uh, eventually you get you know these really interesting and beautiful shots these were more of just a, a quick test that I threw together and uh, this valve sensor it's not available in the uh, store yet but I expect that it'll be uh, available hopefully before the end of this month which is March of 2012 so uh, you know, when I'm 100% sure that I've got um, all of the components picked out and I'm completely satisfied, I'll, of course, post the schematics and post uh, the uh, parts that you need to purchase to build your own, and I'll also add it to the, the store at that point. Thanks for watching.